All right, hi, and welcome to the Dodgettes podcast. I'm going to be one of your hosts. I'm Chris Haas. I'm the coach of Cleveland State Dodgeball team. And I'm Rennie Kaiser. I'm a player for BGSU Dodgeball. All right. And today we have a few guests with us from CSU. We have Sky and Catherine, and then from Kent, we have Vanessa. All right, and I, we're going to kind of go around, and I'm going to have um, – both of the CSU people first, and you guys are just going to tell us, like, your grade and your major and then your team status. And then, Vanessa, once they go, you'll also do that. So go ahead and start with Sky. Uh, hi, people we have. Hi, I'm Sky, Sky Thonesbury. This is my, my second year in the league. It's my third year at CSU. I'm a computer science major. I'm a captain for CSU's team, and I'm the, the treasurer for our team. Um, as far as team status... That's Jeremy, that's the team's your, doing your okay. Team we lost them. By, like, by, uh, what do you mean by that? I meant like if you were a captain or something, Sky. Oh, okay. I follow. I follow. <laughs> also, we lost some people. We lost some people back. We got good rookies and stuff. Yeah. It's exciting. Cool. Um, I'm Catherine Mays. This is my fifth year, maybe playing dodgeball. Um, I did my undergrad at Ohio State, but I just started my master's in environmental engineering this semester, um, and I'm a captain. Great. And Vanessa? Uh, I'm Vanessa Hudson. Um, I'm a senior. I'm also the president slash captain of Kent State, and my major is zoology. All right, and since they mentioned how CSU is doing, how is Kent doing right now? <laughs> you know, um, we're doing, we had a little bit of good news upon the recording of this podcast. Uh, the day previous, we required two new members, so we're rocking with ten. Yay. So, hey, hey, a little wiggle room, or just a little bit. <laughs> All right, and um, I'm actually going to start with Rennie on this question. What got you started in Dodgeball? Um, I ended up, you know, finding out what Club Dodgeball was through Campus Fest up here at BG. I was actually working Campus Fest for another club I was in at that time, which was Water Ski. And for one of my classes, they were like, hey, instead of coming to class today, go find five printouts of, like, flyers from Campus Fest, come back and critique them, because I'm a, um, that's part of my major and everything. Um, so... One of the booths I saw was dodgeball. It was like two or three booths away from me. And I was like, oh, it's a cool sport. Like, I'll try it and everything. I showed up first practice, got beamed in the head by our president at that time, Gabe. And I came back and it was fun. So great start. Great start. Um, I personally was at the gym with my roommate my freshman year of college and I was just kind of wandering around like we were in between exercises and I heard a bunch of people screaming and like yelling at each other and I'm like well now I gotta know what this is about because either there's a fight happening or something fun is happening and I want to be involved either way and um so I like went over to the edge that like overlooks the gym that we practice in and I see all of them like holding dodgeballs and yelling at each other and like waving them at each other for whatever reason. I don't really know what was happening. Um, this happens frequently. And um, the president at the time, Casey Brown, yelled at me and he's like, hey, come down, try dodgeball. And I was like, I mean, it's dodgeball. You don't have to tell me twice. And my first practice, I actually got beamed in the head by Captain Joe Walsh twice in less than five minutes. And I stayed. <laughs> So that was a great start to dodgeball. Uh, Sky, what about you? How did you start dodgeball? Um, my older brother went to the uh, same college as me, two years older than me. So he had his friends. His uh, he's friends with you when uh, he first joined, and you started dodgeball. And I think him and like all of his other friends were doing dodgeball. So I heard about it for like two years before I was in college, and I was just saying like reading all types like um and i finally um got here and then covid happened and i missed the first year that i finally got uh, tried it out 
and it's been so much fun ever since the first like practice I got to be here. I've been coming every single practice I can since. Yeah, that's yeah, good. <laughs> cool. Um, I guess for me, this goes back to my Ohio State days. Uh, I wanted to play something competitively, and I walked past their stands, and they're like, yo, like, come throw some balls. And I was like, this is appealing. And uh, yeah, I went to the first practice. I also got beamed in the head, I think by Ben Johnson. For some reason, I came back. Um, and here we are, like, five years later. So when I started grad school here, I was like, well, I have to keep going. Similarities. <laughs> 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 All right, and how about you, Vanessa? Um, I have to tell you this first part to get to the second part, but um, we had Blast Off, which is where all our student organizations uh, campaign. And I was walking around, and I knew when I got to college, I said, I'm going to play the most <laughs> obscure sport I can find. That was my goal. And so I walked around and I found fencing. And I was like, yes, this is what I'm going to do. So I picked up the flyer, got on the email list, and I didn't think anything else of it. And then two days later, I remember walking outside and there was this big chalk drawing. And it said, come join Club Dodgeball, 430 to 7 in the rec center. And I was like, now, this is what I mean when I talk about <laughs> obscure sports. I have played dodgeball years before. Um, and I was like, I love dodgeball. I want to keep playing. So I went to the first practice. Unlike everybody else in here, I did not get hit in the head. Um, but it was definitely something because it was a very equi equity room. So everything, everybody's warming up and throwing balls 70 miles an hour. I was like, okay, this is a lot going on right now. But I knew I wanted to stay because I've always loved dodgeball every time I played. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely joining the team. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, it's kind of funny that so many of us have the same experience with getting headshot at our first practice. I don't know uh, who started that whole situation or why that's just the luck that all of us have, but uh does not surprise me at all that Rennie got headshot at her first practice, or Catherine for that matter. And I know that yeah. no one's surprised about myself. All right, Rennie, and what are we going over next? Um, So we... Did we really touch like what actually kept kept oh, us no. in dodgeball or that's what we were so, about to be on? What we're gonna do is we're so we all know how we all now join dodgeball and everything, but why are you still in it and what kept you in dodgeball? Um, um do you wanna go first Vanessa, again? Or we can go the other way. Yeah, Vanessa go first. Vanessa. Oh, okay. Um, like I just said, like, I knew I wanted to continue play. It's, I think it's more so because I've had experience with it. I used to go to summer camp as a child, and for a smooth six years, I went straight to the same summer camp, and we played dodgeball. Now, granted, we played with the gator skin foam balls, but it was still dodgeball nonetheless. <laughs> but I actually had experience. A lot of people I know, they've never played dodgeball, or they've only played once or twice in their life, so... I had a lot of experience, and I knew I wanted to continue playing because I knew I loved it every time I played. So I was like, well, I might as well join the team. And I was a freshman, so your schedule's not as busy. So I was like, I'm going everywhere you guys go. And I did. Plus, I also think retention with me helped because I only set the first two points of my dodgeball career, and I have played in every single point that has been played by Kent State since fall 2019. <laughs> so... That's pretty good. All right, and Catherine, what made you stay? Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think about this. Um, I think there were a few things. Um, kind of echoing on Vanessa, Ohio State, for some reason, struggled with numbers when I first started. So I was on every roster. I played not all, but, like, a lot of points um, and got a lot of experience. So it was kind of nice to be able to keep playing, you know, I wasn't being sat out. Um, I think too, just the community of players that were on my team, um, you know, we hung out a lot outside of dodgeball. We would walk together to and from practices. Um, and then I guess the last piece of that is just uh, a lot of us like don't come into dodgeball with a lot of experience in the sport. Um, so I think that was another reason I, I really enjoyed it is we were all kind of new to it and learning it. Um, that's pretty much it. How about you, Sky? What made you want to stay? Um, I think I I think I'm the only one here that joined after COVID, or started after COVID. So no, I think we're no, we also uh, okay. Well, 
starting after COVID, my experience, um, our team lost a lot of players after that. So then we didn't have that many um, like senior players. So we just had a couple my first year. Then this year, we it's it's just me and the people who joined with me are like the eldest people. So we've always been like a whole lot of rookies who don't really know what they're doing and just trying to figure it out together. And it's a whole lot of other really competitive people. And it's so much fun practicing and going to the gym and seeing all these other people that you've been with since the start and they all can like compete against each other, but you're also all trying to improve as a team and compete with every other team in the league, knowing that you're kind of an underdog because you're just figuring it out as you go and trying to learn every single game. And that, that process, like that constant competitive nature around our team, it has made it it's so much fun. That's awesome. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing that made me want to stay in dodgeball is definitely the community. So I moved 200 miles away from home for college, which was a really big step for me because I never spent time away from home. So I had moved all away from all of my friends. I didn't really have anybody with me or anything going on. Um, and dodgeball gave me a really big sense of community. And then, um, I've had some serious life events happen, and during all of those, the dodgeball team has always been super supportive and caring of me, and helped me get through those in whatever way they could. They did um, a memoriam thing for my mom during um, Akron's Pink Out in 2019, and that definitely was like a big thing as a team. And then also, um, previously in the league, I don't see it nearly as much now, but when I first joined the league, there was a decent number of people that, like, especially guys that were kind of adamant that women didn't necessarily belong, and I am fairly well known for being spiteful toward anyone that thinks that under any capacity for any reason, and I love to be the person to prove other people wrong. So I, in part, stayed and got better and improved as much as I could because I wanted to show those people that women definitely should play dodgeball. How about you, Rennie? So with me, um, I started after COVID and everything because I got into college when COVID hit and everything. Um, But for staying in the league, we had a lot of returners. Well, not a lot, but we had some of our returners and everything and a lot of like new rookies who got a lot more playing time than I did. But the main reason I stayed was because uh, the other female who was on the team at that time, Paige, um, her and I became friends. And so it sort of made going to dodgeball, I guess, worth it more or less that like, hey, there's another female. I'm not the only one. And then I, along the way, I met Tree. Tree drove, dragged me to a Northeast tournament. That's where I met Catherine. Um, and I'm still in dodge. Like, I'm still mainly in the NCDA because I want to continue playing. Um, I love competitive sports. I've grown up with sports my whole life and everything. So I guess just the competitiveness and wanting to more or less keep up with my dodgeball skills so I can go play USAD during the summer and everything. That's awesome. Um, so some of the things that we do need to highlight during this podcast episode with this being our pilot and our first episode, part of the reason that we've actually gotten to start all of this is because we started an official women's league. And so we've been putting a lot more effort into making sure that our women feel as appreciated as they deserve to. And we do have a separate league that is no sting currently for our women so that we can have times where we are not just playing against the guys all the time and we can really get that sense of community and stuff going for our teams. And I think it's been super beneficial so far. I don't know how all of you guys feel. How have you guys kind of felt about how the league's been going? Catherine or anybody? (laughs) Um, I think women's representation in this league is uh, too little, not enough, um, and long overdue. So I think this separate division um, is really great from a representation standpoint. And hopefully we can really build it out now that there is something separate. Um, but yeah. Um, Rennie, what are your thoughts on having this separate league going for women's? I honestly like it. Um, it's a definitely a different style pace um, and style of play and everything for playing against men and then switching to no sting and like having less females on the court, different ball type, uh, ball type that I can actually 
grab um, yeah. and everything, like Tell grip and like. It. It. Yeah, um, I think that being able to see all the competitiveness of the females in the league has been beneficial, and also being able to have like more playtime for everyone, especially after like um, the tournaments we've had, and like I knowing me, like for me starting out I didn't really I went to maybe two tournaments um to play for the team uh and then the only other one I went to was nationals for the ladies match uh and I didn't really I didn't I wasn't on roster for nationals so I didn't play at all um so like having being able to play the women's match uh women's games women's tournaments only um has been a lot of help and gives me more opportunity to actually play on my pinch team for other tournaments because then um, the team, like our captains see that I'm putting in more work and I'm actually improving and stuff. Um, not just against like people who will headshot you or like just throw 70 miles an hour and it's like yeah. it released from their hand. Now it's hitting me and you have no <laughs> time in between to actually react and everything, so. Yeah, I've definitely um, between the two no sting tournaments, I think I wasn't super confident personally on how I was feeling with it at the first no sting tournament, just because of the concurrent stuff going on. And I know that I could see the stress going on for like Vanessa and Sky definitely had some stress going on there. And like Sky had to leave right before we started a match for no sting so that um, she could go play pinch. And the rest of our girls had to kind of decide like, do you want to go play pinch? And since we have a full 18 here, like, risk not playing that much or not playing at all, or do you want to stay in no sting and play no sting? And I kind of didn't like them having to choose between that because part of the, like, point of it was supposed to not be not having to choose, and I could kind of see that it was kind of frustrating for them to have to choose, but being able to do the tournaments that are entirely separate from pinch or at least entirely separate from co-ed felt a lot more calm in that sense of like how it was running because they didn't have to choose what was going on and they could really just focus on one part of their game instead of trying to focus on two different versions. Vanessa, how did you feel going between those tournaments? That was picking on me with this tournament, don't you? <laughs> of course, I have to. You're one of the people that had like the biggest set of responsibilities during it, so. Because I am the person keeping it together really like I was the person who was in charge of being a captain so I'm on, on the court leader so I have to lead my team and pinch but also not only that we brought 11 with us 11 or 12 and 10 of them were new so not only I'm leading them on the court I'm also teaching them the rules as it goes and then so I'm trying to do that and then they're like okay we're calling for a no sting game Ken has to go play and I'm like okay I gotta go play I think we had to ref during those times. So I was leaving my co-captain. I was leaving him the ref. He's never ref before. So it was a lot going on. I was like, good luck. I got to go play. And then I finished playing no sting. And I come back and play pinch. And it was just a very long day. Also, fun fact, I was dealing with a bad high ankle sprain. So I was playing all day with a I bum was ankle. Also, I was dealing with a bum ankle that day. <laughs> well, you had a boot on. But... <laughs> I, so, like, my ankle hurt. I, I was, like, I'm tired. But also, it was the first tournament of the year, so I was excited. So, I think that, you know, helped carry me through because I knew, like, finally Ken could go back out and compete. So, I didn't really care what I had to do that day. I just knew I had to get it done. But it was definitely very stressful. So, when they came up with the idea of, let's just have this separately, I was like, yes, please. Please. Um, Sky, I know that you also had to run back and forth a little bit. How was that for you versus being able to just dedicate to the No Sting tournament? I think, in theory, if we could line everything up perfectly and have, like, <laughs> both game types running at the same time and you had time in between them and you had time to warm up between each ball type and you had, like, it just, it isn't really practical. In a perfect world, it'd be great. But it, it just isn't, and it, there's no way it was working out trying to do both at the same time. Um, but I think for recent tournament with BT, that was uh, a whole lot of fun. A lot of fun um, uh, seeing what everyone was bringing, seeing what everyone looked like with no sting. It's kind of like, not quite a blank slate, but it's a lot of people developing um, new play styles and everything to fit the 
the changes to the game and it's really it was really cool to see that yeah that's really great um so in the middle uh, in between those two we actually had um not necessarily a women's tournament but we did have the northern invasion tournament which had kind of a usad style to it um, did that affect your guys' vision on no-sting at all? Because I know that, that some people coming out of their first no-sting tournament with it being so concurrent with Pinch kind of, like, weren't as interested in no-sting as we thought, that, as we were kind of hoping they would be. So how did you guys feel running through that one? Um, I actually thought it was extremely fun at OU. I never played it before, so I didn't go in there with the intention of, oh, we're going to win, even though there wasn't a winner, and it was just, you know, games. I was like, this is just really fun, and I'm happy to be doing this, and it was different, you know, and I was like, oh, I can, like, just clamp it and throw it as hard as I possibly can? Oh, that's <laughs> great. I mean, I can throw a pinch ball, don't get me wrong, but something about just having a lighter ball and being able to whip it is fun. So I, I didn't go in the tension with like trying to be competitive with it. I went with the tension of having fun and I did that. And I think that better prepared me for Northern Invasion where I could actually start trying to be competitive with it. Which I think actually worked out because I was on the same team with Sky and she can attest that after the first few games we started to settle down and we started actually getting the hang of it and we actually started to win. So it was actually pretty fun being able to go from just I'm just here to play for fun to being competitive in that sense. Okay, that's really cool. Um, did anybody else have any like feelings toward no sting at that point in time? Uh, yeah, I guess coming into that, I've I've had probably more experience than most with no sting because I I played in some of the USA rounds um, and nationals with no sting, so um, I'm pretty familiar with the ball type. Um, at OU, I mean, I only played. In Thing, but I, I think probably the biggest challenge was going back and forth between the ball types and that's probably something we would like to avoid in the future um, just from an arm health perspective <laughs> um, but then Northern Invasion was kind of a good like next step for those newer players um, kind of honing in on those throwing skills and the strategy um, and especially playing that USA format as opposed to what the NCDA has outlined as the no sting like rules um, but I think that ball type was new probably more for some of the men than the women who played because we've had, a, you know, we had OU um, and some other USA tournaments. But it's, it's really cool to introduce those ball types to other people. And I think that was a really good, really good tournament for that. Yeah. And then um, for our actual BG tournament, I personally was really, really happy with how things went with that. And I was so glad to not be in the situation of having to have people running back and forth and stuff like that where we didn't feel like we had to hunt people down because I know there was a couple times that like we had to go looking for Sky at OU not because of her own fault but because there was just so much happening so we had to kind of be hunting people down or like running around with our heads cut off like going absolutely bonkers trying to figure stuff out and make sure that everything was situated and then with that no sting tournament we actually got some time to like chill we had a little bit of downtime we managed to do all of the pictures and stuff which granted the behind behind the scenes for that was hectic was so hectic but i think all in all that tournament was like really good for women's and like a really good representation of what we can be and what we want to do with the league ronnie do you have any thoughts on that one yeah so Sorry, I had to unmute myself real quick. Good. But with the BG tournament and everything, I th I definitely liked how it didn't seem like we had to like search for people, especially like between pinch matches and everything, and trying to get every like the schedule to work, keep up with pinch and stuff. Um, for me, I'm just happy we got through the day. To be honest, I was very stressed during the day, but I think having like the break like the lunch break between like no sting and then we ended up playing a pinch match at the end of the day um was really nice especially because like we could leave go get food just chill nap if anyone needed to nap or whatever um finish headshots interviews and everything like that um it was just it was nice because like it was focused on females and female playing and not worrying about oh what's this guy doing like like what's this other team doing you know type thing for like pinch wise um 
and like having just a lot of people there, especially the clinic in the beginning too, was nice to like just go over everything and like learn a little bit more, like throwing, catching drills, um, gameplay. I believe that was the other drill, but. I feel like those girls definitely were really helpful for some of the girls. Um, I did notice that some of the newer players that like really needed it were definitely getting some work on that. Um, how did you guys feel about the drills? Actually, um, oh. <laughs> no. I was gonna interject real quick and just say that um, for anyone listening who doesn't know, Rennie was really instrumental in the planning of the BG tournament and setting up all this photography and other equipment and coordinating that and that's something that like you know one person could do only focus on that but she was doing that and running in between games and helping keeping things moving so i just wanted to like make that clear for anyone Rennie did a really nice job with that yes Rennie definitely did a great job um vanessa excuse me the only thing i was going to say is that i really appreciated the drills and I appreciated them so much that I actually stole one of them. One of them. So Kent's now doing one of the drills in practice, and I've seen the turnaround. <laughs> like it actually, those drills That's helped. That's awesome. And we were doing them with pinch. And um, fun fact, our coach Ryland actually got some no sting balls, so we're gonna be practicing with those. So it's gonna help us a lot in the long run. But I was like, those drills actually help because I could take something from it and then use it to build, you know, our team. So yeah, that's awesome. I think they helped a lot. I'm really glad that you guys got something out of that. Um, Sky or Catherine, did you guys have any thoughts on like how those draws went? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I don't but it, it was funny. I think um, even if some of us, like I know I had some experience with um, no sting before that, um, just through like USAD event or USDA, whatever it is, events and <laughs> and whatnot. Um, but I think for a lot of our other players, like the majority of our players who go out there had no or almost no experience in hosting. And those, those were super, super, super helpful for them. Cause we don't really have the opportunity at most of our practices. We're just practicing pinch because that's what the vast majority of our team is doing. Um, so that you don't, they, most of them don't get the opportunity to really practice with those things at all and really know what they should be doing. So just having those drills to kind of show, here's what you can do to improve and here's what you should look to get, like here's a goal you should work towards is really helpful for them and is really going to help um, progress the league as far as the, the women's league goes. Yeah, I guess the uh, only thing I would add on was just, um, you know, the players were able to network a little bit with I mean Sam Hutter was there um, Becca was there coaching we had a lot of BG alumni who were running drills um, so just really learning from other players I think is really beneficial too so I actually, got that, some, I actually got some really good advice from Sam like we were having like in-depth conversations and it was actually really nice to get some props from somebody who plays at the level that she plays at it actually felt really nice also, might I just add that Rennie taping her fingers for practice is the most dodgeball <laughs> thing ever? Because <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to this podcast, but I'm going to I scheduled this right before practice, so I'm like going straight there right afterwards. And everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, love dodge. Um, what do you guys think is like big different from pinch and no sting for you? Other than obviously the ball size, because like for me, it's really nice because I have really tiny hands. I get told I have baby hands by my entire team all the time. It's very frustrating. And um, it's much easier for me to grab and clamp the ball in no sting because I, they, they actually fit in my hands. Um, how does everyone else feel? Like what's big different from pinch for you guys? Uh, Vanessa, you can go ahead and start. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Sky. <laughs> um, the only difference I will say is actually is a big difference. Um, I actually have two. The first difference is the play style causes you to play faster, so it's a fast-paced game than pinch. You can be more methodical, but when you're playing with, especially with the rule set, you don't have as much time to think as much as you want to. So you have to know what you're going to do before you go into that point. And it is just a fast-paced game all around. Uh, second thing is, I, I, I'm a sidearm thrower naturally in pinch. 
and I throw predominantly um, overhand when I play no sting. So. Really? Um, so, Sky, did you have something that you really wanted to say? I don't think so. I think she's she's okay. <laughs> um, I want to say it personally. The play style between uh, pinch and no sing like completely. Because in pinch, I am as, in the very beginning as like exclusively a catcher, and I slowly build up my throwing just out of necessity to be able to help my team to fill where I'm needed. And then in no sting, um, I found out that my really weird sidearm sidearm ish throw that I do for pinch translated really, really, really well into no sting so i just all of a sudden i went from like i've always been a primarily a catcher i'm a thrower if you need me to sometimes to suddenly i'm one of the best throwers on the court i give it i mean it's like a complete different it's a completely different perspective and it's really cool to be able to like see that see the dodge ball from both sides and be able to see it from the perspective of a catcher so that's what i'm usually am and also now be able to see it as like a thrower. Um, I was gonna say, um, I think being on smaller teams gives everyone more of a role um, as opposed to pinch. I think a lot of people, you know, if you have a ball, you're up on the line and other people kind of hang back. Um, but this one, everyone kind of has a really big role. Um, and then also, I just think the game is played in a smarter way. Um, you kind of think about what your next move is going to be. You kind of come together before you make a throw. Um, I think in general, women play smarter. So <laughs> it's more about outsmarting your opponent than trying to like get a cool highlight or blast someone in the face. Yeah. Um, um, Renny, how do you feel about it? Is there anything that's big difference between? Uh, they've basically mentioned everything about like the play style and the ball type, obviously like being able throwing it differently. Um, I'm definitely more of a catcher than thrower. I think most of us here are catchers than throwers, honestly. Um, but like with the ball being so light, it like doesn't feel like as if it hurts my shoulder to throw it because that's my issue with throwing is like my shoulder isn't the greatest. Um, somewhat still working it back from an injury from years ago, even though it's been fixed. But um, having the ability to throw a smaller ball and being able to like having to figure out how to transition between pinch and no sting um, from going from a, trying to catch a bigger ball to a smaller ball. The no stings are definitely a lot bouncier, harder to catch uh, personally. Um, so it's like nice to figure that out. Like once you figure it out, it's nice to be able to like transition from that. Um, but different game style, obviously like in no sting, I know you want to basically sort of have the um, corners be more in control. And then in pinch, it's like more middles are going to always be in control of what we're doing. Um, but Yeah, um, all right. I think we're going to kind of quick fire through our next question and go with, um, since we started this no sting league, what women have you guys seen that you can specifically think of that have really impressed you? And we're going to start with Sky. <laughs> okay, I got um, a small list. I feel like I'm probably gonna forget someone I'm gonna feel really bad about afterwards. Um, Ellie from Miami, insanely impressive. I love playing against them at every opportunity since like, I first joined the league. Incredible catcher. I know um, at, at BG for the uh, women's game, I we had a really fun game um, between uh, the CSU team I was on, and okay, it was Miami combined with, they had some players from another team, I from think. BG. I was playing against, with BG, um, and it came down really close a lot of times just between me and Ellie, and it's like a constant back and forth. It's so much fun. Um, so them, for sure. And then Alexis on uh, Akron, I also have a huge amount of respect for, respect for where Ellie is absolutely insane at catching. Uh, Alexis has... I think the best throw out of the, the women I've played against, um, this, their throw was so incredibly consistent. They would tag you on the ankle hard over and over and over again. Every time you make a single step out of line, they will see it and they're punishing for it immediately. And it's 
so impressed with how consistent they are, and I'm um, aspiring to get my throat <laughs> that well. <laughs> that, that's like my end goal, and I feel like there's one more person that I'm forgetting. Um, that's for that. I also like we think we we like me and Nasa because they're another really incredible catcher. Like there's another person I'm forgetting. Those are the three I can think of off the top of All my right. head. I can go, and then and then yeah. if Catherine. Catherine. Yeah. yeah, how you feel? Um, about this? Yeah, no, I mean, aside from the people here, which I love playing against you guys, and I hate playing against you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think some other ones, I think Casey from UC has really stepped into the nosting um, really well. Uh, I played with her at BG, and she held down the left side really well. Um, and she definitely plays really smart, making those throws when people aren't paying attention. Um, another person I would say is Cecilia from Maryland. Um, I played with her at OU. Um, and I think, I mean, aside from her throwing, which is phenomenal, phenomenal, I think she's a really great leader too. I think she's brought in like four or five other women um, to play hosting. They traveled like seven hours to play at that tournament. Um, trying to think of who else. Oh, um, uh, rookie on Akron, Abby. Um, was really impressive. I think she's really picked up the ball type, like, really quickly. Um, and she fits right into that that Akron spirit. So those are the three I can think of right now. All right, Vanessa, how about you? Okay, I had to pull up the list from the people that were at uh, BG. So I want to shout out the people I was on the team with. Those MSU girls... I walked in and I and I got moved to a different team that I was originally supposed to be on and then I met these three girls and I was like, Who are these people? I've never heard of these people a day in my life. And they all were really good and they it's all of their first years right now. So um Lauren Crawley, uh Allie Cole, I believe, and then Paige Misner. Y'all. Y'all were good. Like we made it to the finals. <laughs> like I don't even know what else to say about that. So they are really good. Um, of course, Alexis, man, oh my gosh. She's really good. Everybody on here. And Ellie, because she's really kind and also good. I love she's Ellie. also a good player. Ellie's so, such yeah. a sweetheart. She's so cool. And she's so good. I've seen her make some of the craziest catches. I swear. She so, shout out Nicole, too. Nicole. Nicole. Yeah, Racker. Nicole has definitely been picking up, especially on No Sting. She's been doing great. Yeah. Uh, Renny, how about you? First, I want to touch on what Catherine said. Um, love playing with you guys, against you guys, hate it, because <laughs> I, Catherine and I do this every single time whenever we play against you, each other. We're like, truce? Like, <laughs> go at each other last, maybe? Like, no, I don't want to type thing. But um, for first off, the whole Akron, all the Akron girls, amazing. I love playing against them, hate playing against them. They're great. Um, good competition type thing. Would love to eventually play on the same team as them, um, just to see how it feels to not be on the other side of the ball. But like you guys said, Ellie was on. I was with Ellie um, and Katie, and then Reagan for my team. Um, Ellie held that left corner down like very well, uh, which was awesome to be like because I was on the right, she was on the left. She took Reagan, and I had Katie, and um, being able to be the right corner. Uh, not really a corner player during USAD type no sting style. So I had to somewhat adjust to that. And then, cause, and then I like had so much confidence being able to be like, all right, I don't want, I can't play corner right now. And I was able to switch with Katie at any point or like go to the other side if I had to, which was like phenomenal to be honest. Cause I, sometimes you get tired playing that yeah. corner and, or sometimes you can't grip anymore because you've thrown or grip throughout like grip it too hard or something. And then Ava from um, MSU, yeah, right, phenomenal. Love like tried to cross her. I think a couple times. I think she caught me both like <laughs> what basically almost every time I did. Um, can catch, can throw. Um, same with like everyone you guys um, mentioned, especially like Casey. And I've seen, like, from the Northern Invasion tournament, watching everyone play to, like, now, um, especially because we played with guys during the Northern Invasion and everything, um, I've seen, like, I don't know if people are working on just, like, their no-sting style play or whatever, but I have seen almost everyone who came grow from 
the beginning of the day to the end of the day yeah. and even before that and which um like was amazing to see and everything um but yeah um i think for me um definitely my biggest shout out for women who i've been impressed by in the league always goes to sky and vanessa because i think those two are two of my absolute favorite players to play with and against I, my goal is always at some point, if I'm at practice against her or whatever, to hit Vanessa out every single time. I always want to, or to catch her. I don't care. Like, that is my first goal, is to get Vanessa. I'm like, I got to. She is such a good player. She's so much fun to play against. I have to get her at some point. I did not know this. It is, it is every is single time. Is this your calling attention? <laughs> Well, since we're sharing that, every time I play against Sky, you are my intent to get out. <laughs> since we're doing that, I'm in a competition with you in my head, but you don't know that we're in the competition. I that. See, me. that's how I feel. No, I exactly Everyone you. has that in their head of like, okay, <laughs> who do I have to target? Catherine's definitely one of my top three people I always target at the end, or like, just be like, uh, let's get her out so I don't have to deal with her later. But honestly, you like. We always make a truce and like immediately break immediately <laughs> <laughs> but, Um like same thing like with Vanessa and Sky. Vanessa, I don't ever want to throw at you because I know you're gonna catch me almost like every single time. So I'm like right, I'm gonna go for catches against you because that's also my strong suit. I um, love heading running out personally. I try so hard to hit your foot. I always try to hit your front foot because you always stick that toe out. You that stick your so far stick that leg oh out gosh. real far, man. You stick oh your leg gosh. out so far. I'm it's like, I gotta hit her in the toe. Like my that shot. left foot is always just gonna stay planted to the ground. Like I can't jump just with that. Foot. Out. But like, I think during our game, Chris against you, like when I played you, like during the um, bracket play, I think. I literally told you I'm he like I'm going to hedge like I'm going to aim at your <laughs> you knee. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. So. Like, yeah, you're sitting there and you're like, I know that you'll catch me because I don't throw hard enough, so I'm only aiming at your head. And I'm like, Randy, please no. You, um, you egged me on, hundred percent. I, I know, I totally did. Um, Sky definitely at practices. Me and Sky will purposefully go on different teams so that we can sit there and try to mess with each other, like try to hit each other when we're not paying attention or whatever. We kind of like in practice have like a little a little thing going back and forth, and we'll just every once in a while remind each other of the score going on, like how we're doing it's that day against like, each other. <laughs> we never have like normal matchups where we just kind of throw hard or just make good catches. It's always no. like running up. Like four times, chest past the ball with someone's ankle. Like it's never normal. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's, it's totally it's not. It's not normal, but it's so <laughs> highly competitive, and it's the strangest stuff I've ever seen. I love it personally. Um, one of my so favorites was know. Sky. Sky like threw behind someone's back and it curved around at me and I saw it last second. Like had no idea it was coming and just happened to catch it. And I'm just standing there and I'm like. Did that calculated? <laughs> um, did that on purpose? I meant that. It's kind of just kind of. The best catches are by accident. I know. Oh, yeah, 100%. Absolutely, every single time they are always the accidental ones. Like you never have the best catches being the ones that you meant to catch. Um, I think our next big question should be: um, How do you think that this? Having this no-sting league has affected women joining. Do you think it has? And if it has, has it been positive or negative? Um, we're going to start with Rennie. Um, I definitely think it's actually affected, like, positively with women joining um, for the no-sting league and everything. Because uh, I know MSU now, I believe, has, like, a full team. And they are, like, practicing with their women's team and everything. Um CSU, I think, has a full team. Akron's close to having six people or more. Um, I, For me, personally, in BG, I brought back somebody who played their freshman year and now is in graduate school here. And only reason she's back is because it's a women's league. And, hey, don't worry about getting nailed in the head by these guys. You can get nailed in the head by these females instead. <laughs> but... Um, it's definitely, I feel like a lot more, I've seen a lot more women, especially because it's just been my second year um, in the league and everything. But, like, from last year to this year, I definitely see more women out and everything. And 
sort of wish we could have gotten a ton more women to the tournament instead of everything. I know there was another tournament that was hosted somewhere else um, that some females went to that instead. But um, I definitely think if there wasn't any other tournament, we definitely would could have done a lot better on numbers. But for the first women's only tournament, the numbers were there, and which was like amazing to be able to see uh, so many women come out and play. Yeah. Um, Vanessa, how about you? How do you feel it's been affecting? Um, can't speak from personal experience only because we started the season with six girls and now it's just me. But looking on the uh, outside, outside of Kent, it has definitely grown. I've never, actually, before this season, I didn't know there how many girls that were there were actually in the league. And now being in it and able to see it up close, I was like, I, I know for a fact there's more than what there used to be. So I think it's doing well. Hopefully for Kent, it can be doing well next year. Maybe, possibly. Hopefully. That'll be on Nathan. That's Nathan's job. Not mine anymore. <laughs> um, Catherine, how about you? How, what have you seen? I know that you're e-board, so you might actually like have a different perspective than the rest of us a little bit. Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, I think this being the first year of a women's only division league, um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily improved recruitment, but I think it has definitely helped with retention, um, especially because, you know, a lot of women don't have some of the skills or sports backgrounds that um, some of these other players do. Um, and so this is a unique opportunity where they can play every single point. You know, this yeah. is, it's not, it's not excluding anybody. Um, so I think that's been really beneficial, um, especially for a lot of players on our team. I think it's a, it's a lot of good play time. Um, I think next year we definitely have a, a huge recruitment benefit because, you know, we've had these tournaments. We have um, footage from the tournaments and highlights coming out of them and people speaking on these tournaments. Um, so I think it'll be a really good tool for recruitment next year. Um, I guess the last point is uh, recruitment in general is difficult um, to anyone because Hinch is like a very obscure ball type and it is disgustingly aggressive. Um, <laughs> so if you can get a woman to stay at one practice, that's like a huge step in the door. Um, but I also think having at least one woman on your team already is going to do you like way better in that recruitment side. Um, I think it's very difficult to get that first person. Um, but with this new league, hopefully having one can pull in a lot more. So yeah. Um, Sky, how are you feeling about how it's been affecting things? Um, I think it's hard to see the effects so far just because we haven't most of the recruitment it will come at the beginning of the fall semester. And we haven't had that since um, the women's division women's started. I think next fall semester we're going to see a lot of new people, a lot of new women in basically every team. Um, so far, I think I have seen more people gain more play time. Like, there are a lot of people at the BG tournament that I just hadn't ever played against, so I didn't, I barely ever even played against. That just, I was like, oh, these are a lot more people that I, than I was expecting. Like, well, oh, it's cool. I, um, I think it'll, like Kat said, it'll help with retention in the for now, and then it's gonna be huge for the recruitment drive uh, next semester. Um, I think for me, it's definitely I've seen, not necessarily noticed like as many women joining yet, but I have definitely seen that like for some of our female players, it's definitely like a breather for them because I know some of them get stressed out with pinch or we have some people that aren't comfortable playing pinch and there being an option for not being comfortable playing pinch is great because I do myself know how stressful or scary it can be your first couple times stepping in front of a ball that is going that fast because it definitely my first practice was a little scary for me I was kind of terrified I had Leo and Joe chucking balls next to me the whole time and I'm standing there like Like, as soon as the ball comes out of their hand, it's hitting the wall behind me. So getting to see all of these women have any experience where it didn't have to just be pinch and they could choose to play, like, no sting. They could choose to play with other women and just, like, have what felt like a more calm experience seems kind of nice. And also, I think that this league has felt less toxic 
as far as that goes, because I know that the guys can get pretty toxic sometimes from a lot of the teams. We have seen very openly some toxicity from some teams, and at that women's tournament, I think there was pretty much no arguing or, like, serious aggression going on. Like, I know that a couple of us are just, like, loud people, so we were yelling, but it wasn't us yelling at people, it was just us being loud people, and by us, I mean me. Um, <laughs> in total, though, I think it's definitely going to be a really good thing for our league, and I feel like in the future, for us being able to put on our flyers that there is a women's-only league, already seemed like it was going to help, because we already had a couple people that when we told them, they were like, oh, that sounds really nice, I think I could join for that. And now having, like, official footage of it and stuff is going to be really great, and I think that we'll genuinely get a lot out of that. Um, I think our last thing that we're going to do is actually going to be a little fun thing. If everyone has all their note cards that we had you bring and you guys want to all unmute so that we can giggle about this and, like, discuss it all on loop, however. All right, so we are actually going to be doing most likely to and who in this group we think is most likely to do our cute little list of things that me and many wrote down after an hour of brainstorming when we were just dead and wanted to laugh oh yeah so, I'm nervous. so the first one is who's most likely to leave all or some of their stuff at home <laughs> myself yes <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's going to be me or Rennie. Rennie, have you left some of your stuff at home before? <laughs> yes. I definitely accidentally um, left my camera bag in Sky's car and then drove nine hours. Or not, I didn't even leave it in her car. I left it at a tournament and drove nine hours to Wisconsin, called her and said, Hey, girlfriend, um, can you charge my camera and bring it? Because I didn't remember it. For me, um, I've definitely forgot a ton of stuff to practice or something, or just even leaving it in my car and not having my car, because, like, Catherine knows how my car is and everything, but, like, my Bye. life... <laughs> hey. my, life yeah. my life is basically in my car, either in the so trunk, good. in my back seat, or in my car top carrier that I now have on it, but, like, if I don't have my car... I'm going to forget something, and I've definitely forgotten several things, but... Yeah. I would just like to say that the first no. time I got in Freddy's no. car, <laughs> there was a plate, you were a plate of half-eaten pizza rolls on the floor, oh, and she was like, oh, you yeah. can move those. Like, I'm not done with them, but just move them, and you can sit there. I was on the way to a tournament and eating food, okay, Catherine? <laughs> it was like nine in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> at nine in the morning. If you look at my fridge right now. I have absolutely nothing in my fridge. <laughs> Anyways, I microwave. Um, but at nine in the morning, that's what you was like. Yes, this is breakfast, bro. Sometimes yeah. breakfast be like that. I've had Taco Bell for breakfast before. Like not not like Taco Bell's breakfast, just like Taco Bell. Like like. Okay, um, but there's nothing wrong with that. Of like a refrigerated f beefy five layer burrito at like eight thirty in the morning. On sitting. I can't. Oh no. It was bad. I had a rough college experience. I'm going to just stick to my right. um, So, uh, <laughs> next one, we're going to go ahead and go to the next one. Um, most likely to step out of bounds. It's <laughs> so good. I've done this so many times. <laughs> oh, shit. That's okay. I you know think now. you're more likely to step out of bounds Catherine, than that? Because I know Catherine, something you guys the first don't. The USAD tournament we played in together, you stepped out of bounds so... You both <laughs> you and I both stepped out of bounds way too many times. I think I, I had more outs from me stepping out of bounds than actually getting hit. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> USAD is definitely a little monster to me because I have stepped out of bounds because of USAD so many times because that hard boundary just gets mm -hmm. me every single yeah. time. and messes with me. Not having hard boundaries at the BG tournament was nice because it's like oh, I don't have to remember. Hey, I was so thankful. Did. I did. I did watch a couple people just like walk over the throw line though. They just they didn't even like step over. They just walked like right over. Yeah. It. And then they looked down and were like, "What?" <laughs> I think like, I I might have played against Rennie, and I literally rolled my ankle over the throw line, so I was out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> So. That's so great. <laughs> um, 
All right, who's most? Who do we think here is most likely to sleep in between games? I feel like that's something Renny would do personally. I'm trying to find my name. Really? I, well, okay, so so the unfair part about saying me is that I have narcolepsy, so if I'm napping in between games, it's not my choice! Yeah, you did, because I was like, I literally did. Like, I, I literally went what to Vanessa's I practice. You? I went to Vanessa's practice, and in the middle of practice, I just went and sat down on the side, and I looked at him, and I was like, hey guys, I think I might have a narcolepsy episode, and I just laid down and went to sleep. I just well, lost sleep for, for a minute. I had I to tell Mitch, I think it was Mitch, I said, stand there and make sure she doesn't get hit. Cause you <laughs> no, were I didn't have out. a choice. It was either I was gonna, like, just kind of pass out, or I was just gonna, like, sit down and, like, take a nice little nap, because I could feel myself getting tired, and I was like, cool. Well, for me, I don't, like, sleep at night very often. Um, we know, Renny. Yeah, but, like, I during... I feel like you had to have known that at some point. I've had to have that conversation with, like, almost everyone here. But, like, um, the only time I sleep is, like, car rides, bus rides, between games, something if I have downtime, too. Like, I will be out. Like, my old teams from high school, it was either napping in between half, like, between halves, or feed me a chocolate bar. Oh! <laughs> Ready. <laughs> Next one. Who's most likely to get headshotted? Yeah, number of concussions. <laughs> Joe Walsh has given me five concussions himself. You act like that's an accomplishment. I'm not. I don't act like that's an accomplishment. That is just how many. I've had six concussions from my own team. Dude, they just really got, like my forehead, I guess. I don't be getting hit in the head. What are y'all doing? <laughs> Um, existing near Leo, honestly, there was one day, I'm not kidding you, there was one day that Leo, in one singular practice, headshotted me seven times. One of them was point blank, and by point blank, I mean the ball released from his hand here, and it hit me in the face, like, here. I have a question. Like, why not after, like, six or five or four? <laughs> you should not just step out. Um, or that. I tried to catch it. Um, why would I step out if I'm... Um, I gotta keep going, man. I got I got things to prove. I had people to prove things to. Um, who, do hand, think, who do we think? Who do we think in here? Who do we think in here is most likely to headshot someone else? Oh. I feel like yeah. yeah I'm thinking me and Vanessa. The only I reason think... I'm saying me is because of how I hit Antoine when we were at Pink Out. <laughs> Such a good yeah. shot. No, Vanessa did this. I have that video, not to like brag about it, but I have that video that I'm gonna like show people like, hey man, this is why you don't do what he did. Yeah, right. Yeah, I this love Antoine so much. I love him. I love that video even more. Though. <laughs> <laughs> um, my reason for saying <laughs> sky <laughs> is specifically with no sting, sky's ball rises and just <laughs> absolutely blares people in the oh, head. Yeah. Uh, no who sting was, who was it that you headshotted really bad at the the no sting tournament? I think Vanessa. I know I hit Vanessa in the face. Yeah. And you then, did not hit uh, me in the head. What are you talking about? No, there was one that you I hit you head. like or like really close ahead. Maybe the neck, weird. but it was like I that one was your head. Neck. It's like face or side of the head or neck or something, but it popped off and you got a team hatch off it, so yeah. it didn't even matter. Oh, I caught it. Um, is that one what of your teammates caught it? But there's uh, oh. maybe shake rules. I remember Alexis um, clocked me in my chin. I was like, golly. Alexis, I, I was like, well, I guess I gotta catch it. And she said, the, uh, <laughs> the alumni from CSU Aurora that Alexis just absolutely blasted in the head. I was like, oh yeah, I remember wait, that. Wait, I was like, was it Alexis or Nicole who hit Max on the side of the, um, <laughs> the pin game? I think it was Nicole. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it was Nicole. It was so funny. I've like gone through the stream to try to find the exact <laughs> moment. It's not in there. Oh, At least should we, should we actually like make a sixth card for Nicole? <laughs> that was so no. funny. <laughs> Nicole didn't answer my text, so Nicole doesn't get to be here. Um, 
No, that was you so just funny. Have a just pack, that like, was during that was over. during pitch, everyone, wasn't it? Everyone was just like like watched it, and I think everyone was clapping by the end of it or something. And during that pinch match, it was just the boom. Just, like I think everyone for some reason was looking that direction, and he just got absolutely murdered. Like, oh yeah, R.I.P. Just just dead. Like it was also so close though too, because he was just like right there. All right, you're gonna have to finish the last couple because I accidentally closed my document. Okay. Um, out of us, who's Shop. most likely to drop a catch? Drop a catch. Drop a yeah. catch. Yeah. Um, Probably dropping so many catches, man. Sorry, Renny. Yeah. I have a vote, Renny, actually. Yeah. My thing is, I can't catch when it comes to my body. I have to, like, actually catch with my hands. I don't know, I've seen you yeah. catch on that ankle that you stick all the way out at least three times. I get CSU, I was like, do not solo through her. Somebody solo through onto your ankle. I was like, it'll be fine, it was a toe shot, and you just grabbed it. And I was like, that hurt. That yeah. physically hurt me. I think I'm injured. It was, uh, it was rough, let me tell you. So, we somewhat discussed this a little bit, but who's most likely to step over the throw line? Oh, man. <laughs> not voting. I know it's me. <laughs> Kat, I can't vote for you because I've never, I don't, listen, before this year, I didn't really know who you were, so I can't even no, attest to I've this. I've so. step over the throw line at USAD so many times. I didn't step over, I fell over. <laughs> <How we can't. laughs> <laughs> Why are you falling? That's even more embarrassing. Speaking of falling over, it's the one in my low lights video, okay? <laughs> when we were practicing over break with you, me, and Leo in like the civic center and everything, you both of us, well, before I broke my ankle, but like sure. both of us were just stepping over that line because we just could not figure out for the life of us not to step over. Yeah, Leo was like, use this as the throw line. And we did this drill like probably like 15 times and we stepped over like 90% of the time. Yes. Like, even, like, we didn't even like go across the, that line. Our body momentum just carried us over and yeah. us to the line. And we're like a good foot or two back from that throw line at this point too. Um. So I already know the two answers this could be, but who's most likely to get injured? Oh. <laughs> um, Renny and I are currently um, accidentally competing for injuries. Um, now that both of us have been in a boot this year, at some point during dodgeball season, um, Renny with your broken ribs, me with um, dislocating yes as far as joints go, um, oh yeah, 100%. We knew that wasn't really going to be a rebuttal, we just thought it was funny to add in there that we both know that we're just injury prone. For how um, much is KT taped on my body right now? All of it, the whole thing. Man, my, my, I literally have my Achilles KT tape right now. As we're my talking. ankle has KT tape, regular tape, and then an ankle brace on it. And then my shoulder's KT taped, my ribs are KT taped, everything is... My shoulder came out of socket when I was picking up my phone today. Oh my god, you guys are like those, like, you know... Ah. <laughs> Run me my money. Um, You're like those <laughs> really, like, old beater cars that are duct taped together. Like, oh yeah, no, totally. Guys, I love it. Yeah, definitely. No, it absolutely is. Um, but who do we think is most likely to have a low light reel? <laughs> it's in progress. <laughs> it's just going to be all Catherine slipping and falling at every single tournament because for some reason there's a video of Catherine falling at every single tournament. The, the one of the lowlights for me, which Catherine said, I think almost all of you guys have seen, it was during the Northern <laughs> Invasion tournament. It was not in gameplay at all. We were sh literally shaking hands. Um, and I just fell on a ball. And just, <laughs> everyone just looked at me and then was like, why are you on the <laughs> ground? And I'm like, you'll find you out. You killed the ball. <laughs> I really did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who's most likely to get lost on their way to a tournament? Oh. I've no Sorry, Scott. I don't, I, I can't say. I don't know. Like, I don't know Last either. I went to OSU, 
I had like I four of our rookies in my car. I parked in the parking garage I was told to park at. Then I walked 15 minutes in the wrong direction to the gym. <laughs> we got there after the first round of our first game. Went into the game with no warm up because I walked them carrying like the balls. Like everyone was carrying like a two, like a, a lot. <laughs> was carrying a, a lot of um, like things of Gatorade and, sh oh. and stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> so everyone was like exhausted by the time we even got there. We missed our first game and had no warm up, and I, I, I goofed a little bit. Just like, uh -huh. I'll never take it down. Yes or no? I can get us to to the tournament. I cannot find a parking spot anywhere near a building. <laughs> to be exact, CSU. CSU is so easy though. There's a lot right there. You can yes. park on the street. You can you park on the street for free. How many times did I have to turn around during the Stonewall Oh, you know what? Actually, this is a really good point. So we had a Stonewall Nationals was hosted at Cleveland State this year in July. Yeah. And Renia and I were like, yo, we live close together. Let's just carpool. She lives by like, like, my mom's house. Yeah. So I was like, and let's like, just go together now. Out. We looped around the street like four times trying to find parking now this was before we knew that street parking was free we're like oh uh, what about that garage uh no like let's see if there's something else and like literally like you turn as we were driving around so wasn't it sam that we passed and she's like oh yeah i parked down here so we're like okay let's go that way could not find where she parked at all yeah we got Sorry, lost. yeah and then <laughs> someone finally was like park in the garage it's free on weekends so we finally get there yeah. get inside tree calls me and goes hey i saw you walking inside where do you park so i literally had to go do the exact same thing with her right after <laughs> i'm not the best person to I don't take know why they didn't inform you guys that street parking was free on the weekends i know they probably did we just ignored no, them <laughs> so they had a map that like had something circled about parking um because, like, it wasn't just, like, dodgeball going on. I think they had, like, kickball and other sports going on as well. So they had yeah. multiple different spots of, like, parking for everybody. Well, for the life of I me. Heard I heard that. Yeah, that too. But, like, I just couldn't figure out where to park. I think I still it was like, oh, oh, Rennie's driving. Rennie's got it. <laughs> I got us there until the parking. No, Sky will get people there. It's just if she's going to get people there without several wrong turns. <laughs> Cause I know there's been another tournament or two where she like missed a turn or something, and like it wasn't a big deal, but like she still misses a turn almost every time at some point. Pretty reliably. Yeah. It's not too bad until I like I start getting close and then it. <laughs> she gets close and then goes. She gets it's close bad. and goes. Uh oh, and goes the other direction or something. <laughs> this doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> does a U-turn in the middle of a one-way street? <laughs> this doesn't feel right. This doesn't right. <laughs> well, then there's Catherine, who does roundabouts for fun. So. Yeah, yeah, I Catherine. love roundabouts. <laughs> 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 just keep blowing your mouth. No, literally, <laughs> like, Ryan was talking in about In people's that. way, just in people's way, just no, going listen, in circles. Mm -hmm. you, you a... have to be G. Yeah, what? oh, you has... Yeah, yeah, I love that. Oh, you has a great roundabout because it's not like really obstructing any traffic. It's just kind of like on the outskirts of the campus. And so when I went there, I literally asked them to just keep going, keep going. <laughs> and other cars were passing us. If yeah. we pass you in that roundabout, because I know which one you're talking about on April. <laughs> I'm gonna be really upset. Just have just that roundabout out and you cir like circling it. I'm going like that is now my goal for nationals. We're just gonna get is as many cars as we can to just be circling in the roundabout. Everybody's yeah, just gonna... I like. Quite honestly, I wanted someone to pull us over and ask what was. Going on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, you're ridiculous. Oh all right, so I think that is all the big stuff that we had to bring up for Women's League. Um, we don't have any official tournaments set that are going to have any women's stuff going on, but I think we've talked about trying to set something up for some stuff in the future. Other than, of course, Nationals always has their ladies match, which we are trying to plan some stuff for to make sure that that one's going to be even cooler this year than it has been in the past. Um, Rennie, do you have anything to add in that area? No, not really, um, unless 
Catherine, you know something both of us don't know? I don't think she does. Uh, um, I would say, you know, Stonewall is a great organization to get involved with, um, especially for that ball type um, and that, you know, a different community of people. Um, USA tournaments have come out, but I know there are some more coming. Um, and I, I think, without saying too much, um, I think the NCDA is going to try to host some, right. you know, some well, other tournaments. We'll summer, figure all so. of that out. Um, I think that that should be just about it for us. Um, thanks everyone for listening and involving in being involved in this. And thank you, Sky, Catherine, and Vanessa for joining for our pilot episode of this podcast. I hope you guys had fun. Um, I cannot wait to be able to do this kind of stuff again, and I think we're going to try to keep doing this every two weeks, we said, Renny, right? About two weeks, yeah. Yeah, about every two weeks we're going to try to keep releasing so that we can keep this podcast going and keep up to date and make sure that we've got women's involvement getting as big as we can. Um, uh, once again, I'm your host, Chris, and... I'm Renny. And we are going to go ahead and sign off. All right.